We are in King West and we are right on the edge of what was called the Garment District and is now called a Fashion District in Toronto. This is a great building. So this building is from 1917. It is home to 54 hard loft units. This is one of very few original hard loft buildings in Toronto. So that's what's so exciting about it because there aren't a lot of them and basically you're buying a piece of history when you live here. You're looking at some amazing post and beam construction, original cedar slat ceilings. You've got 12 foot ceilings in some units. This unit has 11 foot ceilings. The ducting, some people may not like it. I think in this case, it's fantastic. Uh, brings the eye up to the ceiling. It really gives it this industrial feel. Another advantage to living in these types of spaces is the opportunity to use the same windows as what was here when it was a factory. And usually they're quite large. They're not necessarily floor to ceiling, but they offer a lot of really interesting detail for the unit. This is owned by a professional woman that wanted to live downtown, who's really interested in interesting spaces around Toronto and was specifically looking for something that she could entertain in. This unit was built in 1997, so obviously styles have changed. So the kitchen had some renovation done to it. We extended this island because it's the place to be with this great quartz countertop, which is over three meters long, over a meter wide, tons of places for people to sit. We kept the cabinetry because the cabinetry was really great condition. We just updated it, new appliances. Most important thing was storage. And so if you notice on the other side of the island, the entire underneath of the island is storage. We did this soft gray penny tiles. I tried to keep it as neutral as possible with the two glass pendants that were added with more of a vintage bulb, the Edison bulb. We really wanted it to flow when you walk through the space because lofts can be really big, they can feel a little bit cold. And so we chose certain things to really warm it up, make it look like each space was independent, but they all worked really well together. We used area rugs to give the living room a space, but also a sectional, which really squared off the living room area. The couch has this really soft sort of roundness to it. The vases have a roundness to it. The edges of the coffee tables are round to complement and go in opposition to some of these really hard lines that you see with the post and beams and the utility pipes. We took some black that you see in all the utility ducts and the ironwork, and we brought it down in the pillows, the vase and the table but also we have such huge windows so this is a great opportunity to have plants in here and to warm up the space. For the dining room we really wanted to put it close to one of the posts to kind of give it almost another room feeling to give it an architectural statement kind of right beside where you eat. What we tried to do in the space was to keep it neutral and to also work off all of these really amazing textures and colors that are already part of this loft. The bedroom isn't the largest space. It does hold a queen-size bed. It's open in a way to the rest of the unit. It's very similar in a lot of lofts, that the bedrooms aren't so separated. We really wanted, as the owner was walking through or when people were looking at the property, to show that it flowed all the way through. So we kept the same colors, the same textures, same scale, so that there's a unity as you walk through. We've got a really great size closet. Again, we have this beautiful custom loft door with the old barnwood and the mirror to give a little bit of light reflection. The primary bath is really, really an interesting bathroom because you don't see them often. This one has what you call a wet room. And a wet room is an enclosed shower and tub area. The shower and the tub are separate, but they're all enclosed in one room. I think typically you saw this at times more in Europe and it has come to North America, but you don't see it often. And so I think it's a really unique feature here. The powder room is located close to the foyer of the unit and the colors were brought in by using a really contemporary porcelain black and white tile on the floors. We put up shelving again from old barn wood, which is great for storage. The washer and dryer is also in there, so it serves partially as a utility room and also trying to soften it a little bit using round mirrors. 
We also really wanted to, in this day and age, have an office. And because this is a one bedroom and it's such an open concept, the thought was where to put an office. But we also have quite a bit of space. We were able to do an office nook in the main space that'll provide enough privacy and enough space for you to get your job done during the day. The owner has lived here for almost a decade, loves the area, love how the area has changed and grown. And to be able to own a place that also has such amazing history to it and such incredible details from the yellow brick to the post and beam. One of my favorite features in this, because I'm a bit of a history buff, is the yellow brick. What's really interesting about it is in the 1880s, a large quarry of clay was found in the Don Valley. So Toronto history right here. And everyone was fascinated by this color of this brick because you didn't see it. Every, you know, you always see more of a red or orange style brick in Toronto. So it became quite popular. It was being shipped all over Ontario. And very luckily this building was able to get some of this brick. And it's so warm and just different. I just think it's a really unique part of this loft. She's had a fantastic time living here. So would I live here? Absolutely. I own a loft. I love loft living. I love the location. And this unit is, is pretty special and pretty unique.